I'd like to welcome each one of you today to our devotional study through the book of Exodus, and we are currently in Exodus chapter 17. I encourage you to turn there today with your Bible, as well as with a notebook, and jot down some things that the Holy Spirit of God teaches you as we move through this study. Uh, in the second half of Exodus 17, we've been looking at Israel battling Amalek, and we've seen how Amalek is a picture of the flesh. And uh, that the flesh needs to be fog against, but yet the flesh needs to be fog against through spiritual means. That we cannot overcome the flesh through our own ability. That we need to crucify the flesh and we need the help and the enabling of God. And we need the weapons that God has given to us. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We also saw yesterday Moses interceding for the people of God and the fact that that made a difference uh, in the life of the children of Israel there. And friends, we need to be a people that intercede for one another and what a difference it makes in our lives when we're involved in praying fervently for one another. And I believe that there's many Christians that lose in the fight spiritually because we they do not have enough people that are praying for them. And may we be a people that hold up the saints of God, hold up the hands of the saints of God, and earnestly pray that they might have victory. Now, with that in mind, let's come back. Exodus chapter 17, let's pick it up in verse 8. It says, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel and Rephidim, and Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go out, fight with Amalek tomorrow. I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill, and it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were very heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the right side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun, and Joshua discomforted Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. So as we come into um, this truth, there's a couple of things that we find here. We find here, obviously, the importance of us praying for one another. But we also see that prayer is work and that we can even become weary in supplication. And that's exactly what we see with Moses here. Moses is fervently interceding for the people of God. He desires that they would have a victory. But yet we see that it tells us that Moses' hands were heavy in the beginning of verse 12. And, and friends, as we look at that, we're reminded of the simple truth that prayer is work, that prayer will weary the flesh. Uh, as we think about this, we are reminded of the importance of prayer in Luke 18 and, and verse 1, where Jesus says to his disciples there, it says, He spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And the truth of the matter is, sometimes prayer can bring a weariness in the flesh, but at the same time, let me remind you of the blessed truth that it is prayer that keeps us from fainting spiritually. And there are many people today that faint spiritually because they do not pray. Remember, Jesus said to his disciples as they went to the Garden of Gethsemane, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. He said, the spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And of course, we know the story that night that they slept when they should have been praying. And as a result of that, they fell when who knows, maybe if they had been involved in praying, that they would have been victorious on that particular occasion. As we think about the importance of prayer, we're told in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17 to pray without ceasing, to continually have that attitude of prayer in our lives. In Colossians chapter 4 and in verse 2, it tells us there, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Yes, friends, prayer will bring weariness to our flesh, but we must understand that it brings strength to our spirit. And many times as we pray, we can become weary. And, and we need to understand that prayer is work. True intercession for people is work. And Moses' hands were heavy as we come in this, into this passage. But I want you to notice what happens here, how God provides for him so that he can continue to be victorious. You know, as we look at this, we think of Joshua, we think of Moses, but really I believe that the true heroes in this story are Aaron and Hur. 
And it says in verse 12, Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat there wrong, and Aaron and her stayed up his hands, or propped up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Friends, can I say one of the greatest needs that, that men of God have today is people like Aaron and her that are willing to hold up the hands of the man of God. People that are willing to, to pray for them and to support them in the midst of the fight spiritually speaking, who are willing to uphold them in the midst of the battle when they get when they get weary and to say, I just want you to know that I'm here for you. I'm praying for you. I'm here to support you. I'm here to do whatever I can to hold up your hands, to encourage you, to help you along in the battle. You know, as we stop and think about Aaron and her in this passage, especially her, I want to thank God for people in my life that are like her. And just, you know, people that are willing to take a second seat. Her comes into this passage, and we see him here in this passage. But, you know, really, we don't hear a whole lot about him before this. We don't hear a whole lot about him after this. He's one of those guys that's kind of unnoticed, unthanked, and underappreciated. But he is faithful in doing what it is that God calls him to do. He's faithful in helping those that are on the front line. He's faithful to those who take the front seat. And they're in the heat of the battle for God. And friends, I want to say today that people like her are absolutely invaluable. In this story here, Aaron, or Moses rather, is unable to hold up his hands. And if they fall, then the Amalekites will certainly win the battle. However, Aaron and her step forth and they hold up the hands of Moses until the battle is won. Friend, the task that her accomplished that day doesn't sound like a lot to you and me. However, had it not been done, had it not been for this man, Aaron would, or Moses would not have had the strength to do the job, and Joshua would not have been able to lead Israel to victory that day. To me, Aaron and her here are the heroes of this conflict. Had they not been there, the battle would have been lost, and Israel would have been defeated. The job that they performed was absolutely invaluable. And friend, I want to encourage you today. There are a vast amount of people who are praying, who are fasting, who are carrying the loads like the frontline people are able to do their work. People who pray and seek the Lord's face and lift up the hands of those who are weary in the Lord's work. Those people are absolutely indispensable. Nothing means as much to me as the knowledge that some of God's most precious people are holding up my hands in prayer. And friend, let me encourage you today. The world may never know your name, but if the battle is ever to be won, it will be won by the saints of God who are winning the victory in the closet of prayer as they lift up the hands of God's servant. Oh, may God bless everyone who stands in the gap for God's servants. No price could ever be placed on what people like her are worth in our churches. But not only are people like her invaluable, but they're always involved. Her wasn't a great leader like Moses. He wasn't a general like Joshua. He wasn't a great high priest like Aaron. He wasn't a warrior like those in the, in the army. He was just her. And the Bible, actually, if you take time... Um, and you look at Exodus chapter 24, verse 14, you do find out that Hur was a man of influence among the people. But on this day, there was one thing that Hur could do, and he did it willingly, actively, and faithfully. He could hold up the hands of Moses, and he did the best job that he could. Friends, what a lesson for us in our churches today. Not everyone can preach great messages. Not everyone can sing solos. Not everyone can play instruments. Not everyone can be effective as a witness. Not everyone can do the visible jobs, but we need to remember that the Lord has placed each one of us in the body as it has pleased him. You see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So let me encourage you, be faithful in doing what it is that God has called you to do, and understand that if God has put you where he has placed you, doing what he has done, that is a great work that needs to be done. And thank God for those people who know that they can't do everything, but they are determined, I'm going to do something for the grace of God. I'm going to do what it is that God has called me to do. Little as much, 
when God is in it. You may not be seen by everyone. You may not be thanked by everyone. But let me encourage you, God sees, even in the midst of the thankless tasks, God knows. And he will reward those who are faithful in those times uh, to him and to what it is that he's called them to do. Thank God that there's guys like her. Thank God there's people like her that are faithful behind the scenes doing what it is that God has called them to do and lifting up the hands of the people on of those that are on the front lines getting weary in the battle. Have a great day.